Hey guys, Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center today, and we are going to talk about boas. Boa constrictors are absolutely awesome, amazing, amazing snakes. Love these animals. We actually breed uh, some boas. We breed sun glows, hypos, albinos. Uh, absolutely love these guys, and they do make a great, uh, great and amazing pets. Now. I'm going to talk kind of an overview about boa constrictors today, okay? Now, so let's go straight into this. Boa constrictors are considered a type of live birth. Now, there's three different types of birthing that can happen in reptilian species. One is oviparous. It's called oviparous. That is straight egg layer, just like your pythons, uh, just like birds, uh, things like that, turtles, tortoises. Those are oviparous, okay? Now, what the boa constrictor is considered is ovoviviparous, which is technically they come out live birth, but the parents, the females, actually produce eggs and hold the eggs the whole time, which would be anywhere around 120 to 140 days. And then the babies hatch inside of these guys and they come out of the mom technically live birth. Then there is viviparous, which is complete and straight live birthing, so to speak, just like what humans would be. All right. So the boa constrictor, there's many different localities. Now, BCC is the term for a true red tail boa, such as the Colombian. Now, there are other types of uh, boa constrictor localities, such as the Nicaraguan, uh, the Guyana, Suriname, the Hog Island, um, and I'm probably missing a couple of uh, a couple of other ones that I just is not coming to me right out of the gate, and that's okay. Um, there's a lot of different a lot of different morphs in these guys now. Uh, like I said earlier, I do the hypos and the sun glows and the albinos, uh, but there's jungles and there's motleys and there's Ferrari line and uh, there's just all kinds of um, all kinds of different color morphs in these particular guys right here. Now, one of the things that's most sought after about the boa constrictors is something called the Batman pattern. We have one in a Guyana species that we have here, and inside of this saddle right here, it would actually have a dip going up and down three times. One arch, two arch, three arches, which would give that Batman symbol. That's one of the most sought after things when it comes to a lot of your normal locality species of true boa constrictors. Now the other term BCI would be boa constrictor imperator. Now that would be basically considered a mutt. Right? Meaning we essentially would consider it a mutt in the boa world, meaning it's a mixed breed of a couple of localities. Maybe the Colombian with the Hog Island, uh, maybe the Hog Island with a Suriname, uh, maybe a Suriname with a Guyana, uh, or just any of those mixed in kind of with the, the Colombian boa itself. Some of these boas stay smaller and some of them do get rather quite a bit larger. Okay, Now, the boa constrictor is probably from the science and the research and the test that we have done over the years, probably pound for pound, one of the, if not the strongest snake on the planet, given its size comparison to any of the large species. So if I was to take a berm or a retic, and I was to do that the same size as this guy right here, the exact same size as this particular female, this particular boa would actually be potentially stronger, quite a bit stronger than the berm, the retic, the rock python, the carpet python, any of those other guys. Now I want you to understand the science behind why that may and may actually be uh, true in a real world setting. With these guys, you see where she's trying to go. She wants to get on these vines, she wants to go up. Even as a large species, these are still considered an arboreal species of snake, one of the larger of the arboreal species of snakes. These guys can get up to 10 feet, 12 feet, full grown. Now, average size is anywhere from six to eight feet. However, whenever we start talking about these guys at any size or at an eight plus foot, uh, eight plus foot size, the reason we say these animals are stronger and the reason they have to be as strong as they are, look at the muscle texture just as she's moving. The reason they have to be so doggone strong is because while they're hanging on a vine or they're hanging on a tree limb, they have to be able to take something as big as like a condor or a primate or a very large bird and take it in mid-flight, mid-jump, be able to grab it, curl it, 
eat it all while hanging from a tree. So it takes an immense amount of strength and incredible, an incredible um, dexterity, but also pinpoint accuracy. So whenever that thing's coming by and they just reach out, grab and grab it and bring it into them and are curling that thing up, a lot of the times literally dangling just like this from underneath the tree limb, swinging because they hit so hard. And yes, these guys can hit like an absolute hammer when they swing. They're incredibly food aggressive, opportunistic feeders, but amazing, amazing pets because they settle down so well. It makes a great in-between from the ball python, the normal ball python, before or you get into something as large as the Burmese or the retic, uh, maybe the anaconda or whatever the case may be that, that floats your boat as far as a large snake goes. Now understand, the anaconda is actually a boa constrictor species, and they do eat snakes too. They also are a, a partial snake eater, a lot like the king cobra and some of the milk snakes and, and scarlet king snake and things. Uh, but these guys right here will eat pretty much any kind of mammal uh, and bird. All right? That is their primary, primary diet. Now, one of the great things about these snakes for breeders especially is they don't have to do any kind of work as far as incubation goes. Mom does it all. As long as the habitat is set up right, mom does literally everything. And that is awesome for some people. However, there is a catch to this because because they hold the babies for up to four months or just a touch longer in some cases, the, most of the time we only breed these guys every other year because you want to make sure that the mom or the female gets weight back to her. And sometimes it takes quite a bit of time for them to build that weight and that calcium uh, back up inside of their body so that they can produce nice, fertile, beautiful eggs. Now, I will be showing you uh, some pictures uh, of some of our beautiful, beautiful boa constrictors. Uh, our sun glows hypos. Uh, we'll show some pictures uh, in the midst of this particular video, but look how absolutely beautiful this sun glow is. Absolutely stunning, stunning female. And here we have the hypo and albino. And you can see they're paired off. This is one of my pairings. Now, absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful animals. Now understand this. Albino and hypo make the sun glow. Okay, so you remember if you go back to the genetics, okay? Oh, there she is. There's a beautiful girl. There's their heads together. We go back to genetics. Albino is a recessive genetics, so it takes two. So this hypo right here would have to be head albino along with the albino in order to produce the sun glows. However, if this male impregnates this female and she's not head albino, then what it will make is a bunch of hypo head albinos. Now, if she was head albino, then it would produce hypo head albinos, albinos, and sun glows. So there would be three different color morphs inside of her litter of babies. Now oh, here's another one of my sun glows. She doesn't have quite as much of that deep orange as the first sun glow I showed you. This girl's absolutely beautiful. And the other one is what we call a high color sun glow. She's just absolutely stunning. Got orange peppering all throughout her body. And if you don't remember about the uh, episode on um, genetics or ball python genetics, just go go check out the uh, the video on ball python genetics where I talk a little bit more about recessive and dominant uh, genes. But here's another one of the sun glows. She's absolutely stunning, stunning animal. These are beautiful boas. 
inside of the boa species, uh, these are some of the most sought after, sought after pets. One of the things that a lot of people absolutely love is almost, there's only been a few exceptions to the rule, but almost every single boa, you can see right there, males or females have a mustache, which is really, really cool. All right, now, I wanna also explain something. The, when we started talking in another video about uh, not paying attention to that whole head-shaped cat eye garbage for venomous snakes, triangular shaped head, cat eyes. And this one ain't venomous, okay? This is another thing, that old myth, the way that the old myth goes, as far as the whole cat eyes and triangular shaped head thing. These guys are constrictors, they're not venomous. Now, all snakes have a little bit of anticoagulant in their saliva, which means it's gonna bleed just a little bit longer, but as far as being venomous, not in the least. And one of the really cool things about these guys is if you take a really good hard look, the pattern from the side of its head, let's see if I can balance her up here, pattern from the side of its head actually goes through the eyeball. The eye, that same color, follows through the eyeball and right to the front of the eye, which means the whole pattern just continues to flow, making it not stand out as its head. Now, in captivity, one of the uh, two biggest things that we have to watch out for, medically speaking, uh, and that we probably treat the most when it comes to uh, boa constrictors, and I'll say three things. One is respiratory infection, two would be scale rot, uh, and number three would actually be mouth rot. Most of the time, the mouth rot comes from either that bacteria that we talked about, like with a corn snake, or from pushing. Maybe it's in too small of an enclosure and they just start pushing. They're trying to find their way out. Reticulated pythons are really bad about doing that. Respiratory infection with these guys, I'm going to tell you, the, the stupidity on freaking Facebook uh, in some of these dumb groups, uh, forums, and on Google, the, the thing is, is keep that humidity high. Absolutely not. Because in enclosed spaces, we've talked about this before, too much humidity is going to cause a respiratory infection in a heartbeat, and too much humidity in these guys not having dry places to get onto is what will cause the scale rot. You'll see all kinds of little scabby, uh, ugly looking marks coming up on the belly in patches, and it's basically kind of like the same, same thing as bed sores. Uh, sitting around in urine and feces soaked bedding all the time and all it does is creates blisters and boils uh, which also will be a problem when it comes to mites because understand mites are born and gestated in warm moist areas okay now I'm not saying don't give the boa a little bit of humidity don't give it a give it a massive water dish give it a big old water dish but if you go crazy with the humidity, you're going to guaranteed cause a respiratory infection in that animal. And you may even cause some other problems such as mites and scale rot, okay? Things to watch out for, all right? Just understand, just some things to keep an eye out for. Now, these guys can take live or dead, and they will take live or dead. Rabbits and rats, <coughs> excuse me, rabbits and rats is typically what we sell here at the zoo. It's also what we feed uh, to not only our personal breeding stock of animals, but also to our zoo animals. Uh, but... There are other things that you can do, guinea pigs, you can do hamsters and mice and gerbil. Understand that hamsters and gerbils a lot of times are kind of like crack for snakes. You start them on it and it can be very difficult to get them to stop um, if you're doing it on a regular basis. Mice is just trash food, it's another one of those. It's, it's just a waste of time, it's garbage food, all you're doing is wasting your money. Uh, rats and uh, rats and rabbits tend to be the easiest, uh, easiest access. Uh, if you know any like rabbit show breeders or somebody that breeds rabbits for, for meat, uh, for their own personal meat, things like that, absolutely nothing wrong with it. These guys, these guys do absolutely amazing. Now, this right here is boa constrictors. Hopefully this has been a nice overview of an absolute beauty, beauty of an animal. One of my favorite snakes that I get to deal with is the boa constrictor. Hello, beautiful girl. Now, this is Chad. We are the Reptile Rangers here at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit that like button. Our information's in the description below for the zoo and medical center information here. If you have any questions, write us in. Uh, feel free to write us in and give some suggestions on things that you want to know about, things that you want us to film about. We appreciate you following along week after week. We want to thank you for the support. We'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll catch you on the next episode. Later.